Hello everybody, my name is Leah Ralston from Mommy Lay Designs, and I'm back with you today with a fun video for Faber-Castell. Every month of May, artists all over social media participate in this fun challenge that is called Mermaid. May is going to be full of mermaids all over Instagram, YouTube, um, Pinterest. So a lot of fun artists create their own mermaid characters, and it's just super fun to see a lot of different types of illustration and so many fun and cute drawings of different mermaids. So I figured you and I are going to create some magical mermaid. But have you ever seen a unicorn mermaid? Well, today is a day you and I are going to create Blossom, which is my personal favorite, a character that I created. And mind you, Blossom is a unicorn. But today we will be turning her into a fun mermaid. So what are you waiting for? Grab your supplies and let's get started. In today's video, I have prepared some of my favorite Faber-Castell supplies. I do have my Polychromos colored pencils. I also pulled out some gelatos. I do have my mechanical pencil, a water brush, some Pit Artist pens. I also pulled out a metallic marker and we have a watercolor paper. Today, I will also be using some non-alcoholic baby wipes, and I am going to be sharing with you how I'm going to use that. And just in case, I also pulled out some water. And I am super excited. I hope that you are. So let's get creating. Okay, before we get started with drawing our main character, I always advise that you start with a little bit of warm ups first. Um, when I am drawing, before jumping straight to my project, I really like to just do a little bit of warm up. It's kind of like my stretching before I work out. So this just helps us with our mind and hand coordination. And when I do my warm ups, I just really start with simple, basic shapes. I try to practice my oval, create some circles in many different sizes too. Some are like skinny, some are like really big and chunky, some are like really wide and open. I also like to practice my lines, straight lines, and I go in different directions, up going down, down going up. I also like to do some diagonal, left to right, right to left, and same going down or going up. So I like to do some upside down U, letter U. I like to do some jiggly or wavy lines. I like to do some scallops. I like to do like small circles, basic fun shapes like I really advise that you start your drawings and your illustration with just simple warm ups. And I really think that it will help you, like uh, how it really helps me. Okay, so for the fun part, after our warm ups, let's talk about Blossom just a little bit. So, Blossom is a fun unicorn that I created and I have turned her into many different types of stationaries. She was part of a 
backpack. She became a sticker. She became stamps, um, part of a pen, um, a planner. So many different stationaries were created by a couple of different brands. So today I will share with you how I draw Blossom. It's going to be really fun and very simple too. Okay, so Blossom has this very kind of like an egg. Think of it as an egg, but not too much of a pointy head though. So let's try and draw an egg head. I know it's kind of really super funny when I think about it now, especially now that I'm trying to teach you how to create Blossom. So she does have an egg head. And then here, kind of like try to put a, a line in the middle of your egg. Okay, and so we are going to divide this into three. Okay, so the top part is going to be part of Blossom's hair. The middle part is we are a little bit to the bottom, but closer to the line where you created. So that's where her eyes are going to be. Okay, so we have her hair. And then here is where her bottom nose and mouth are going to be. So I just created kind of like a rainbow from left to right because that's what feels natural to me. And I know some people feels more natural going from the right to left. So however you want to do it, it is up to you. Now we are going to draw her nose. Well, actually nostrils. So we're going to just create some oval shape to create Blossom's nostrils. And then in the middle of that, we're going to create a very cute smile. So like a wide letter U. Okay. And so for her eyes, actually, every single time I create Blossom, she's just always smiling, very happy. I don't want to see a unicorn sad. So I always make her smile and her lashes are super long. So it's like it's going away from her face. It's kind of like wings too. So I just add like long lashes like that. Okay. And then on top of her head, I like to create a bow. So for my bow, I just create like letter C's like this and then another C. And then I create this big bow. Remember that when you're drawing kawaii things, it is not a realistic drawing. So everything, you can exaggerate it to however you like. And you can turn, you can make blossom into however you want. If you don't want to put a bow, that's okay too. If you want your bow to just look like this, you can do that as well. So this is where you are going to use your creativity to create your own version of Blossom. Is that a deal? Okay, so I am just going to do my usual bow but you can do however you like. You can give her a hat. You can give her um, sunglasses on top. It is up to you, all right? So now we are going to, of course, we cannot have a unicorn without its horn. So instead of a super pointy, I like it to kind of like an upside down ice cream cone. So it's not super pointy on top. There's just a little rounded edge on top of that. And from the middle of her bow, I like to just start doing this, like, almost like a wave. And this is just like small patterns I like to put inside Blossom's horn. All right, so we have Blossom's head. Now, 
this is going to change because she's going to be a mermaid. Okay, so when you are drawing or creating a kawaii character, how I'd like to do it, or how I like to do it, is I like to see them in a very round or a very um, a very chubby look. So with Blossom, very simple. All right, so we have the basic arms, we have the torso. Now we're going to create Blossom's tail. Hmm. For the tail, I'm just going to make it really simple. That's too wide. So I'm just gonna pick it up from the her belly, like this. Okay, and this one's not gonna go too wide just like this and then like that but so far we have it we really have it i think that's it okay now we've done the head the body the tail what are we missing my unicorn does really have great hair. Blossom has this big, puffy, long hair. And of course, now that she's a mermaid, um, mermaid hair. So we're gonna go create that fun hair for Blossom. The way I like to do this, think of it as a stretched scallop, like, or like a sun, you know, when you create sun like that, but it's an incomplete sun. So kind of like a letter C, but the opposite way. And then this one, I'm going to bring it down. So we're going, we're creating like wavy, like really good volume in here because she's a mermaid. Okay, so for this next step, I am done um, erasing as much as I could from my sketch earlier. And this step, the line work is going to be personal preference. So you may use a different tip um, of your choice. As I personally, I love the look of the thin and thick that I can get using a brush tip pit artist pen. Now you may use the small, the fine, the medium, the 1.5. You may use the soft brush or you even may use the extra small tip of the pit artist. That's going to be up to you. So personally, I am going to use a brush pit artist and this is again, the raw umber and 180.
So now we are going to start coloring. But before we do that, so I'm going to show you how I will create some seaweeds. And this will just um, add some visual in our drawing. Okay, so Blossom is a really very light blue, and I have the perfect color here of Pit Artist, which is the Ice Blue 148. Half of Blossom's face, I am going to use the Pale Pink 114. I'm going to go pink, purple, teal, pink, purple, and teal. All right. So I'm just going to apply the colors, the Pit Artist. And this time I'm going to be using my Polychromos to add the gradient, the shadows, and create pretty highlights in here. I am going to grab the colors the closest to what we picked. All right, so I'm just going to create some gradient. I'll start adding in my second darkest first or the medium color. And I'm just going here. And I want the middle part of the hair to be the highlight. So I'm not gonna color in the middle part. So I'm just creating small or short strokes like this. Now I'm going to my darkest color, repeating the same process, short strokes, and being very light with my pressure. Okay, so off camera, I went ahead and added more shadows and depth to our coloring. And I just added the dark purple in there, which is the purple violet and 156. And also used a darker pink, which is a light purple pink and 128. Eight. And so I added some of the dark shades over here and then created some shadows and depth 
into Blossom's bangs. And then also I created that signature blush um, of my drawings and then just added darker pink as well in her bikini top. So let's go ahead and proceed and color in Blossom's tail. Okay, so for Blossom's tail, I am going to color it in in a purple shade um, because I want it to really pop and not blend in with the rest of the background. And let's go ahead and apply our first layer very lightly. Let's go ahead and color in our second color, which is the crimson in 134. Concentrating and being intentional with my strokes, knowing that I'm going to create my shadows and my depths. Adding our third color, manganese violet in 160. Again, I am only using very, very light pressure. Now I'm going to use my darkest shade here, the blue violet in 137, and I'm really going to just concentrate in where the corners are. And this is where these are the areas that I really want to be dark and create as much depth as we can. Right, so now I'm gonna come back with my two lightest color. This was the second one. I'm just gonna go pull all the colors that we used. By creating small circular strokes, I'm starting to blend the colors together. And now I'm gonna go back to the lightest color. Same circular motion.
there we have it. Blossom in all her mermaidness glory. What a fun video we did today. Um, again, my name is Leigh Ralston, and I'm super grateful for you joining us for this fun challenge, Mermaid with Faber Castell. Thank you again, and please don't forget to follow us on social media, Faber Castell USA, and use the hashtag Faber Castell so we can find your beautiful creations and your illustrations. As always, stay creative and stay happy. My name is Leigh Ralston from Mommy Leigh. I can't wait to see you again for another video.